In this video, I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate how we can take our drum parts and apply them to the various uh, machines to play them live. Um, we went ahead and isolated what parts we wanted to play live, and there are multiple ways you can do that. Um, the first way I'll show you is on the SPDSX as loops. There were very specific parts in there uh, on uh, drum machines and sort of tom parts that if you're playing a, a live kit sound, you won't necessarily be able to play those at the same time, so you can loop them from a pad. So you go ahead and drop whatever loop you've made onto the pad you want it played. And then I can go ahead and show you uh, how to execute it. So I've gone ahead and loaded these loops into the SPDSX and here's an example of how you could play them and now having your hands free to play other stuff on top of it. So here's that opening synth part. It's played back as a loop where I can start it and stop it or just let it run. And now I can add in the other parts. This would be the tom loop set to this pad here. And I've also added in those little sort of filtered 808 and drum machine loops. And that'll be mapped to this pad. And like I said, you can start and stop. You can turn them on when you need them, turn them off when you don't want them. So here's just the loops on their own. And doing this, it kind of gives it a faithful representation of what the song sounds like, rather than trying to accomplish that with other sort of instruments and not necessarily sounding exactly like the track. So here's another approach at playing those sort of faithful samples uh, without using loops. This will be using automation through the uh, computer where you're running Ableton Live. So we've automated the drum samples to change when I need them to change so I can play the pads as more of a musical instrument uh, playing a melody. The way that I've achieved this is by sending a MIDI cable to the computer. So all the sounds will be coming from the computer and I'm using the SPDSX as a controller. Here's another example of how you can use your SPDSX for playback purposes. Uh, there's going to be a time when you, you're going to need your hands to play the drums and you can't play all the percussion and the loops, or you just want to run a full track from your pads. Uh, I've made a, a bounce of the track minus the certain things that I'm going to play and what the vocalist would sing and I've linked it to a click track so that it, when I fire this pad it fires the track and the click. In order for this to work uh, correctly, there are a few settings you have to make sure on. You have to set the pad to a phrase and it has to be set to alternating so that you can start it and stop it without overlapping the loop or accidentally having it loop itself when it's done. It'll stop when the track ends. Uh, 
you'll, if, it, if it's not set properly, you'll end up with something like this. Where you have multiple tracks playing on top of themselves. It just turns into a big mess. Wow, that's pretty bad. <laughs> so again, make sure it's set to uh, a phrase and alternating. And that way you can start it and stop it correctly and it'll stop by itself when the song's over. In this track, Adam's made a sick 808 part. It's nuanced, there's a little filter in there. Quite tricky to chop in there and sample out individual sounds. Adam's already been through how you do chop those sounds and how they all fit together as an option of playing it. We have here the TM6 Pro and that has a bunch of sounds in it. I plugged some pads in and some PD8s and a KT10. And straight away, I've pulled up an 808. I've got kick, hat, and a snare. And the fit of the part, I think. There you go. Pads into the Tim 6 Pro. With a bit of work, a bit of decay, pitch alteration, transient attack, you're getting close to the record. Heard it, couldn't sample it, found a way of doing it with an analog box.